Hey everyone, it is Evan here from the TradeRisk.com, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing leveraged ETFs, specifically how to trade them for max profit. Now, if you're finding this video natively on YouTube, we're going to link up the corresponding article, which contains everything we're going to cover in this video. It'll have all the links, pictures, images, examples, and everything that you can just scroll down, read through, and link to if you uh, rather take a look at this material in that version. And don't forget, if you like this video, definitely check out the rest of our trading education channel on YouTube or on our website. There's plenty more articles and informative posts there uh, for you to watch and read. So with that, let's get into the substance here on leveraged ETFs. And right off the bat, uh, these vehicles, leveraged ETFs, bring some pretty strong opinions from uh, really you know, the trading and, and investment community. You have really strong sort of critics to be careful and not to use them and, and really frown upon these vehicles in general. And then you have the other side, the other camp on the other extreme, which, you know, certainly loves the idea of uh, the return potential in these things. And we're going to basically outline and bring both camps together, kind of show the risks involved, and then by taking care of the risks, you can really start to enjoy some of the benefits. So that's the high level. Let's get into it and we'll start right from the top. What are leveraged ETFs? So if you've never heard of one, uh, taken directly from Investopedia, their definition, uh, a leveraged ETF is a fund that uses financial de derivatives and debt to amplify the returns of an underlying index. These funds aim to keep a constant amount of leverage during the investment time frame, such as a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 ratio. So in plain English, these vehicles, this, these ETFs, seek to double or triple the returns of some underlying index or ETF. So for example, if we look at this slide here, this is a six month window of the S&P 500. There, that's the red line, that's the SPY ETF, uh, and that tracks the S&P 500. You can see over this six month window, the S&P 500's up 10%. Now that green line above it is uh, SSO, which is a levered ETF, and it is a 2X leveraged ETF. So that means it's seeking to return twice the performance of the S&P 500. You can see it does achieve that goal as its return is just under 20% over this six-month window. And then finally, that third purple line up top is UPRO, and that is a levered ETF that seeks to return three times the S&P 500. Once again, it did achieve that, and it did return over 30% over this six-month window. So in a perfect world, this is how ETFs and these, and these levered ETFs would act uh, with every instrument that they try and track. And we're going to continue on here now that we have that base case sort of uh, beneath us and, and shown. So how are levered ETFs constructed? Remember, we want to really understand what these products are before we start trading them, before we start getting into the good stuff on how they can be used and implemented. We really should understand uh, the risks involved and, and, and really how they're made up. So at a very high level, uh, funds use one or more of the following products to achieve their desired leverage. So index futures, index options, or equity swaps. These are the three primary ways that ETFs uh, achieve the leverage of two to, two to one or three to one uh, of that underlying asset. Now. There are risks involved, and that that's that you know that that is certainly the downside. Is all of these products, uh, the index futures and options specifically, require constant rebalancing to remain at that target levered objective. So you can't just own some futures contracts and be done with it. Futures contracts have an expiration date; they need to constantly be rolled and rebalanced. The same thing for options contracts, there's always an expiration tied to every options contract. So you can't just have one set it and forget it. The fund is up and running and tracking at 2x. Unfortunately, you need to keep um, every single day essentially rebalancing and purchasing different options, selling some off, rolling them, and that is the downside and risks involved. That's one of the risks involved with these levered ETFs, and we're going to talk about it in a little more detail in just a moment. So. 
these are the risks. Uh, what are the risks of levered ETFs? Well, here they are. Uh, the first is is just sheer leverage. Okay. Um, if you're trading the S&P 500 and you want some ex you want some levered exposure to it, you may go put on that SSO or that UPRO. And what you may not account for right away is, let's say the S&P 500 is just in a very quiet uh, uptrend and it's just grinding out new highs. So you go ahead and put on that UPRO to get that 300% exposure. And what you really need to be careful of are sudden spikes in volatility, right? So if the markets are closed and some macro headlines, some news hits, and all of a sudden we have, um, you know, a sort of a panic or, or some type of violent open the next day, or let's say there's, you know, just a more gradual market regime change where uh, we start to get into some choppy behavior with more pullbacks and two-way trading. That's going to naturally increase the VIX. It's going to increase the, the average true range. And your levered ETF is going to start moving a lot further and a lot faster than perhaps you originally uh, thought or were expecting. And again, we're using the S&P 500 in all these examples, but as we're going to discuss, Levered ETFs exist for individual sectors, commodities, and lots of other different products and indices. Um, but sheer leverage, that's that's definitely uh, a, a one of the primary risks here. Uh, again, overnight headline or macro risk like we sort of just discussed in that example. And, um, you know, a 3% move, just over a 3% move, is going to move a triple levered ETF double digits. So a 10% move is quite big. So if you're trying to go concentrated into a levered ETF, just understand that that underlying instrument only needs to move a little over 3% for you to be up or down 10%. So the potential returns, very attractive, but there are clearly some risks here that you can see, um, you know, can, can easily sort of surface or, um, you know, uh, or creep up on you. The second is, the second major risk here with trading levered ETFs um, ties into that conversation we were having a little bit earlier on the way that they are constructed. So, Levered ETFs in general decay over time. So almost as every day goes by, these vehicles, these ETFs lose a little bit of their value. And, and the amount that they lose depends on the product really and how it's constructed and what it's trying to track. Um, and also really depends on the underlying movement of that index. But if we get in here to why they decay, it ties back to the constant rebalancing. So levered ETFs decay in value as time passes due to the constant rebalancing and rolling of underlying futures and options contract. So just like we discussed, you can't just set it and forget it and own the same futures or options contract. You need to constantly go out to the very next month and roll those options out. And when you start to roll and incur those extra fees of transaction costs and slippage in paying that extra price and premium and then that decay in premium over time, if the underlying asset's not moving, the underlying options or co futures contract is slowly decaying and that all ties into the decay in value over uh, the ETF itself. And really an example is the best way to illustrate this. And what you can see here, and, and really this isn't that extreme of an example. Um, I didn't have to look too hard. This is the first thing that came to mind and I just printed this chart out. I'm sure there's plenty of others I could have chosen. So it's not a cherry picked example, but this is uh, UCO, which is a triple levered ETF for WTI crude oil. And that's the top chart there. And the bottom chart is the, the crude oil contract. So WTI crude oil contract. And we're looking at an entire year. So we get 12 months of price action and we get the year of 2016. So really, if we look at the bottom graph first, you can see crude oil had a 42.8% rally in 2016. And UCO again is the 3x bullish ETF. So really, we're expecting something to be around 125% return out of UCO over this year because it should be three times the 42.8% that the futures contract uh, returned. But what you actually see is something dramatically different. It's in fact a loss on the year. So UCO actually lost minus 6.86%. 
So not even a positive year. It didn't even track WTI on a 1x basis. It actually lost money uh, dramatically. And you can see the, just the different, you know, the, the way that chart looks as opposed to uh, the bottom pane, which is the futures contract. So this is decay at its finest, and this is the risks of uh, holding these instruments for a long period of time. And again, I didn't have to really cherry pick this example. If you go out and look at really a handful of, of different levered ETFs over a six to 12 month time frame, you're gonna see something similar to this. If you extend it out to two, five or 10 years, you're gonna see something even more dramatic. And again, they're not all like this. It really depends on what type of ETF you're looking at. In general, commodities, a little bit more of a decay factor than indices, uh, S&P 500, the Russell 2000, the, Q the NASDAQ 100, those types of things, a little more stable sector ETFs, a little more stable when you start to go out to commodities and other products like volatility, those things get very dangerous. So let's continue on our conversation here, more on the risks still. Uh, we're going to talk about the solution to, to, to these risks. Do not hold leveraged ETFs as, in as investments or long-term trades. I mean, that's absolutely hands down going to be the sort of the catch-all here. Um, ETFs, these levered ETFs do track nicely in the short to intermediate term, really on the short term. So intraday, multi-day, maybe multi-week. But as you start to extend really beyond a month, if your time horizon is one month or longer, you should really seek alternate al alternative means of exposure. And if, if you can't get that desired leverage, you just need to sort of settle on owning the underlying index at a, at a just a, a one beta at a, at a natural uh, 1x ETF because the decay factor here can just dramatically destroy your performance regardless if you were right on the direction. So just again, imagine you know, having a really bullish thesis coming into 2016 uh, on oil and you say to yourself, well, I just don't, I don't want to own just the futures contract. I want to own, you know, I want to own something that's going to, you know, give me even more gains, a 3x ETF. That sounds like the answer. And, and, you know, very clearly you can see here, that's certainly not the answer. So back to uh, where we were, I prefer two weeks or under. You know, I say one month or longer, you should seek alternative means. I personally, my style, if I have to hold some, if I think a trade is going to last more than two weeks, I'm generally going to look for a different way to express it. Um, so I really like to, to keep my time horizon very short when trading ETFs. So uh, like we mentioned also, there are some ETFs that are much more destructive than others. Like I say, it's more so the commodities and other products where you start to see that decay really kick in, natural gas, uh, even the gold and silver ETFs, I believe, start to lose quite a bit of tracking error over time. And the generally speaking, the, the, the index and you know sort of sector ETF, levered ETFs there, do a little bit better of a job, but you still need to, of course, do your homework and do your research before trading those. So we've spent this whole time talking about risks and sort of how to, you know, how these ETFs are constructed. Let's start to get into some of the benefits because there are clearly some benefits to using these products. The first, um, efficient use of capital. Um, you know, by design, we're going to be, we're going to be trading levered products, which basically means we're getting, we're maximizing our, our capital. So we're getting, you know, two to one or three to one exposure for just putting up $1 worth of capital. Uh, if you have a small trading account, or if you just have uh, a strong opinion on the current market type, and you want to have that leverage on, you want to get your foot, you know, you, you know, just more exposure out of that market. Levered ETFs are a great, great way to express sort of short-term uh, opportunities. Levered ETFs also serve as great hedges. So you could go to the options market. That's you know generally you know that that is why the options market exists is is to really hedge risk. Um, if you don't have options trading or if you just don't like you know getting into the complexities of options, levered ETFs are a great way to are a great alternative and. You know, just a, a great uh, sort of complement to hedge a portfolio, particularly if you have, say, a retirement account that doesn't have access to options trading. Levered ETFs 
putting on something like the 3x bearish ETF to the S&P 500, which is something I like to use a lot for hedges, that can really start to cover a lot of exposure, again, with an efficient use of capital, getting that leverage, protecting a long portfolio, putting on that hedge, and we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Um, great for additional broader targeted exposure. So again, if you have a strong opinion, if there's something that suddenly changes in a market, uh, a sudden swing or shift in sentiment or news catalyst or any type of, of shift that you need to really target down or get some more exposure to, levered ETFs, again, are a great option to do that with. So here are some tips for trading them. And then we're going to discuss and go into some examples of some trades that I've used in the past with these vehicles. So the first tip is have a short enough trade outlook, right? We've, we've sort of hammered this home. If, if you have to trade for more than a month, you should really seek an alternative uh, way to express that opinion. And really just reiterating that thesis, have a short enough trade outlook. That's going to be your first tip because if you don't, again, it doesn't matter if you're right on the direction, you're not going to make money on it. So that's number one. Number two is precise market timing. And again, I know we would love to have this with every single trade that we put on, but with levered ETFs, things are magnified. So if you have to sit through chop, remember every day that goes by, you're you know, you're uh, being affected by some decay. Even if it's just a small amount, you're technically losing out day after day if your timing is not exact or is not, uh, re you know, just in the general area of being correct. So you don't want to sit through a good amount of chop here because, again, that's just going to eat away at your trading profits. You really want to have a strong opinion on not only direction but market timing. And third is position sizing. Again, this ties back to the risks. If you experience some sudden shift in the market regime, some overnight catalyst, some news event, anything like that, uh, and you're stuck in these overnight because you clearly can't trade these uh, when after hours or once the market is closed, position sizing is ultimately going to be the only thing that saves you. So these are the three tips. Um, this is good, of course, with any type of instrument that you're trading is, is to have a good handle on all three of these. But um, for levered ETFs, again, all of this is magnified, and this is going to be very important for you to pay attention to. So with that, let's get into some of my strategy for trading levered ETFs. The trades I make fall into two categories. The first are quick multi-day setups. These are generally trades that are going to last about two to four trading days. These are very short, sort of tactical, uh, opportunistic trades that I'm generally looking for like momentum or breakouts, things that I think I can capture just a quick uh, sudden burst of momentum. And then the longer term multi-week swings, this is where Ideally, the bulk of my profits come from these are longer term swings that are that are going to be put on for about a month or so. And it's the multi day setups that I trade levered ETFs with. And this is where I pick my spots very carefully and trade very tactically. These setups don't happen all the time, um, you know, maybe a couple of, a month. Um, it really depends on the market environment and sort of, um, you know, the, the market regime that we're in. If we're in a low volatility trending environment, chances are I'm going to be just having on more multi-week swings where I'm just capturing an uptrend. But if the market's uncertain, if there's volatility out there, I'm certainly going to have less longer term exposure on and I'm going to be trading a lot more of these levered ETFs in a more sort of opportunistic fashion. So the quick multi-day setups, two to four trading days, that's my bread and butter, and that's primarily where I'm using levered ETFs to express my opinion. Um, I focus on momentum, as mentioned. So for these two to four day trading setups, I really like momentum. I don't want to trade a pullback. I don't want to try and capture a trend. Uh, I'm looking for breakouts and reversals. Those are those are certainly, um, you know, my favorites when trading levered ETFs because you're you're gonna, you're generally going to be right, uh, you're going to be right or right out. So you're going to be either 
you know, the trade's going to work in your direction. You're going to capture some profit. You can be out of the trade pretty quick. Or you're going to be wrong. The breakout's going to fail. The reversal is going to fail. And you're going to know that in pretty short order. So I prefer momentum, not pullbacks, not trend trades or longer term trades. And here we go there with uh, basically everything we just covered. So let's get into some examples. The first here is TQQ. So this is the 3x bullish ETF to the NASDAQ 100. And you can see there uh, where we entered long. So on that reversal, on that, uh, you know, basically hammer reversal as we tried to break down through that $90 support, we failed, we reversed, closed near the highs. That was our signal to get long. And you can see after two days, we took 40% of that profit off. And then on that third day, as we got that real nice igniting bar through resistance, we scaled out of the rest of the trade. Just a three-day trade. Ideally, we have other long exposure on at this time to capture a potential you know, continuation of trend here to the upside. But the levered ETF gives us that additional exposure at those key market inflection points. That's the way I like to trade these things, is to get that concentrated exposure when I think the timing is right, and if I'm wrong on the timing, I get out quickly. So that was our first trade example. Uh, our second one, very kind of similar setup here, this is ERX. So this is a 3X um, bullish ETF on the energy space. And once again, it was a reversal trade, you could see the energy sector here in a downtrend for multiple months and as you can see it started to break below that $30 level and it had one weekday below that close below the lows from March 13th and then the very next day we came gapping up and shooting back above that $30 level closing strong that's where we got long ERX and again we got one day of follow through and we sold 50% of it the very next day. And that's, you know, generally, you know, we're in a downtrend here. We're not going to be greedy. We know we're trading relatively counter trend here. And we want to harvest those profits off. And then take a look at that exit just two days later. Really not letting it give much room back. We don't want to be in this trade. We don't want to sit through a pullback. We really just want to capture, uh, you know, the, the strong sort of momentum phase and move on when that's passed. So after that, uh, one day as it started to break below the prior day's lows, decided to exit the trade for uh, a nice quick few day gain on ERX. And then finally, our third trade example here is LABU. This is a losing trade and you can see, well first LABU is the 3X bullish ETF on the biotech sector um, or industry. So you can see here as uh, biotech, as LABU broke above that $52 multi-week resistance, we had that nice strong close. We got long on uh, towards the end of the day there and you can see the very next day, it reversed, gave back most of those breakout of the breakout day's gains. But you can see it just closed right at that $52 level. So we said, okay, let's let's give this one more day. Let's see if this breakout's really going to fail. Let's see if we get some continuation to the downside. And you can see we did. And right as we started to break below the prior day's lows, we got out of the trade and took the loss in LABU. So again, not willing to give much um, room against ourselves in these types of names. We really want to be, you know, right in or right out. We want to be good on that timing. So that was a losing trade in LABU. All right, now let's continue on with some of my tips and, and strategy for trading these. So as you could see from some of those examples, I prefer taking partial profits quickly. I like taking partial profits into strength. Again, my goal is to sort of be in and out of these vehicles, in and out of this market very quickly when I'm trading these ETFs. So as it starts to move in my direction, in my favor, I'm already looking to scale partial profits in that position and looking for uh, just locking in those gains. The gains come fast. They can also disappear pretty fast. So I like to just lock them in, get that exposure at those key points, and sort of move on and, and just take continually take risk off the table. Um, very quick to exit if things move south. Again, it just goes back to the way I'm designing these trades. I don't think they're made for longer-term holds. I think they're made to be 
pretty tactical and you do want to look for that exit if things move south because you're getting hit on a double, you know, you're getting a kind of a double whammy. You're losing on just the underlying movement and you're also losing on the decay factor. So again, those losses can accelerate pretty quickly. You want to get rid of um, trades that are moving against you in a uh, pretty short order. I also use levered ETFs to hedge a portfolio of longs. Mentioned that earlier. Uh, it's SPXS. I, that's generally my go-to for hedging. That is again the 3x bearish ETF. So again, if the S&P 500 goes down 1%, this SPXS is going to be up 3%. And again, if I like other names that I have on, if I have you know Apple, Microsoft. Google something on that I'm looking to hold for the next month or so and I don't want to sell it because it still looks pretty good but I think the market could start to pull back. I'll hedge myself. I'll pick up some SPXS um, and I'll be able to sleep easy at night having that hedge on. So finally, I'm going to talk about my universe of, of liquid levered ETFs. There's lots to choose from, so when you start to think about, okay, what are the ETFs out there, what, what's accessible, what can I trade, what options do I have, uh, there's generally many different products for the same index or sector, and because there are many choices, there's a few things you want to verify. First, you want to understand what what is the underlying index it's tracking, so you want to be able to find out what are the exact you know stocks that it owns or what is the underlying ETF that it's the inverse of or it's you know leveraging up on you want to get that down so you really have a good idea you want to look at the underlying ETF to really base your decisions so your technical analysis if you will or whatever type of um, you know really any type of, of technical study or analysis that you're doing should really kind of be done on that underlying ETF and then you can use the levered ETF just to express your idea. So make sure you know what it's tracking. Also, number two, the average daily volume. This is very important because you don't want to get stuck in a illiquid uh, levered ETF, especially something that's moving quick uh, but doesn't trade often. You know, or, or very liquid, you're going to just get crushed on all things. You're going to get the decay against you. You're going to get the movement against you. And then you're also going to get a ton of slippage against you. So that can be an absolute nightmare. Make sure the volume is trading uh, for your trade size or you know for your plan. I can tell you that some of the sector ETFs, some of the indice and ETFs, those levered ETFs, you know, theoretically, uh, volume not incredibly important there because you would always expect there to be some arbitrage that is existing between you know what the levered ETF should be returning and what the actual index is returning so you'd expect there to be some arbitrage sort of algorithms kind of keeping things in line so they don't deviate too much but again you still just want to have your due diligence in there you want to trade something that you know, is, is doing a couple hundred thousand shares or, you know, something close to that. Ideally, that way you're not stuck in, and again, getting hit on the slippage on top of everything else. Occasionally, you will need to find new ETFs if, if liquidity dries up or if names become delisted. Uh, recently, the, the very popular DWTI and UWTI, I believe those got delisted. They had some new uh, ETFs come in, or I think they either rebranded them or repackaged them. Either way, you know, you will have to look for alternatives out there. And there's new products that come out. Um, you know, every month there's new ETFs getting launched. Some are going to be more efficient, may have a lower expense ratio, may trade with more volume. So you always just want to, you know, kind of double check and see what else is coming out there to see if you should be refreshing or uh, perhaps expanding your list of what's out there for levered ETFs. So here are the names that I look at and use and trade. Um, this list will be on that article link. So again, if you go down to the show notes, the description of this YouTube channel, you can get the link to the original article and it'll have this list up there. That way you can copy it down if you'd like. But it has the, on the left is the non-levered, is the underlying ETF that uh, each of the bull and the bear tracks. So that's the first page, that's the second page. Basically covers you know a handful of commodities, um, all of the major averages, some of the different sectors in the in the S&P 500, and then you have the commodities alternative markets in there as well. So in summary, leveraged ETFs can be wonderfully profitable trading vehicles 
when you trade them responsibly. I think that's the key to achieve maximum profits, to achieve gains. You really just need to stay in the game and, and accept the risks and handle the risks appropriately so you can achieve the types of returns that these things can give out. Uh, by knowing the risks involved ahead of time, which is hopefully what we covered in this presentation, um, and accounting for them up front, you can enjoy the potential fast returns and efficient use of capital that levered ETFs provide to you. So that, I think, is the secret to you know, getting those returns is just handling the risks up front and then letting the profits handle themselves, right? If you know the position size and you know which vehicles you should be trading, you know the volume, you got all that down and covered, then you can trade them, you can be allocated to them, and you have your stop losses in place, and the rest is sort of history. So that is uh, really the summary and uh, secret to trading these. And that's the end of this presentation. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like on YouTube. Check out the other um, videos that we have in our playlist of trading education on our YouTube channel. And again, uh, check uh, thetraderist.com for more articles and connect with me on our, any of our social channels. Happy to hear any comments, suggestions, or uh, thoughts for upcoming videos. So. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.